people born in the 50s and 60s are having a harder time getting a good night's sleep. Research by an Arizona State University professor shows that people born in those decades have 10% higher insomnia symptoms than those older than they are. Here to talk about his research is Dr. Connor Sheehan, an associate professor in the T. Denny Sanford School of Social and Family Dynamics. And Connor, I just barely escaped this having been born in 1970. So tell me why people born in the 50s and 60s was intriguing to you and your partners. Well, I've always been interested in how cohort processes, like how different generations act differently, behave differently. So with my co-author who studies midlife health, we wanted to see, are they actually sleeping differently? Are we seeing decade-based differences in sleeping patterns? Okay. Did you also measure based on ethnic background, gender, all these sorts of things? So we've done that in the past. In this case, we found that men in particular, men born in the 60s, they are sleeping particularly worse compared to um, previous generations. Were you able to look at factors or make an educated guess on that? Yeah, so we think that there are three main reasons that are driving this. The first is that this cohort was disproportionately impacted by the Great Recession. It's not only our research that has shown this, it's others that have shown that um, specific stressors related to the Great Recession negatively influenced people born in that cohort, specifically those in the 1960s. The second reason why we think is that people born in the 1960s are increasingly involved in caregiving. They're not only taking care of their older adult parents, but increasingly, and what's really unique to this cohort is that they're taking care of their children and helping them get launched into adulthood. Taking care of your older adult parent or your kid, that takes time, that takes money, that it's stressful, it gets in the way of sleep. So the sandwich generation thing, okay. Exactly, the sandwich generation really influencing their sleep. And then the third reason is smartphones. So. Um, generation or the silent generation, about 40% of them had a smartphone in 2019, about 60 or 70% of baby boomers in 2019, but 90% of Generation X had a smartphone. And smartphones are incredibly addictive technologies that you can just scroll all night, hold a bright phone up to your face, um, you bring work to bed with you. So for all these reasons, we, we, those three main reasons, we think they are sleeping worse. I think there's probably more conversation now generally about how important sleep is for overall health. Do you think that's the case or are we more enlightened on that thinking about, okay, well, let, let me try to relax a little bit before I go to sleep or maybe not use the phone as much, that sort of thing. I, I, I think people are aware of how important sleep is for their well-being. But also, I mean, we have the most addictive algorithms in human history, at, literally in the palm of our hand. We can watch Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. So that will keep us up. And, you know, I think that kind of outweighs what we know about sleep. And another thing is, if you're worried about sleep, it's harder to sleep. Well, I was even going to ask you if there's a measurement of um, whether one gets consistent, continuous sleep. So let's say if one were to get seven hours, but it's straight through, is that better than maybe being in bed for eight and a half, but it's, you're still on your phone, it's not restful when you start. As people get older, they have to go to the bathroom at some point in the middle of the night as well. Are all those factors, I mean, like, again, how important is, let's say, continuous sleep as opposed to other aspects? So, so I haven't looked into this, um, but I, I think whatever is working for you is best. You know, like, sleep as much as you can. If you have to go to the bathroom, what are you gonna do? You have to go to the bathroom. Yeah, all right, so what advice if someone were to come to you and say, you know, I'm addicted to my phone, but I really want to sleep more, any just obvious advice you'd give? I would them? say, welcome to the club. I'm addicted to mine. <laughs> it keeps me up at night. But the advice that I would give and the advice that's been so hard for me to take is to not sleep with your phone in your bedroom. You can sleep with it in another room. If you have it, you're going to get the notifications. You're going to read emails that are stressful. You're going to fall asleep watching uh, social media. So if you can, you can put it in another room. And I know people are going to say, well, I use my phone as an alarm clock. Well, you can buy an alarm clock. Yeah, but also very briefly, what if someone is, is more stressed because they're thinking, well, wait a second, if I get an emergency call in the night and my phone's in another room, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> That's a good point, yeah. <laughs> I guess ha have it on loud, but you know, make sure you, you can get the emergency notifications, but you don't want those emails or to fall asleep watching TikTok. So briefly as we close, you were not born in the 50s and 60s, but do you find that some of these same things, you mentioned the smartphone, do you find that you sleep pretty well or are the stressors getting to you sometimes too? Well, I appreciate you asking. I mean, I think about sleep all the time, which makes it difficult to sleep. But I will say I'm very worried about younger people's sleeping patterns, particularly people in the college generation, you know, 18 to 24. They're increasingly working in the gig economy. 
They are on their phones more than anyone else. They are drinking energy drinks. They are very stressed. So I'm very concerned about their sleeping patterns. Okay. Connor Sheehan, thanks for being here. We appreciate your time. Thanks for having me, Steve.